2016 was the year where those with patience were rewarded. Whether it be fans of beleaguered sports teams who have finally won a premiership, those who wanted the 1940s to come back into fashion, or in our case, gamers who have waited five, maybe even 10 years for a game to come out. And boy, oh boy, did they come out. Whether it be Doom or The Last Guardian or Final Fantasy XV, which ended up being the boy band album cover simulator that we were all dreaming of. By the way, head down to your local record store and get the latest albums from The Choco Boys, Lawrence and the Machine, and Radwimps. Just don't confuse them with Radwimps, which is an actual band. We also got our hands on the hotly anticipated No Man's Sky, which led to a supernova of anger as No Man's Sky did not live up to the astronomically high expectations put upon it. I don't know what was higher, the number of planets in No Man's Sky or the number of change.org petitions accusing that game of all forms of scammery. And yeah, sure, the community hype train was a little bit over the top, but this wasn't helped by a intentionally obscure marketing campaign which didn't give out details of what the game actually was, which left us to fill in the space and then just insert this sort of idyllic space exploration, first person shooter, stealth action adventure, MOBA collectible trading card game that also provided puppies and the meaning of life. The meaning of life, by the way, is more puppies. However, No Man's Sky trailers were far from the worst piece of gaming marketing in 2016. That goes to Battlefield 1. Where the game treated its World War 1 subject with respect and reverence, the social media team for, the, for that game were more like World War what? In one particular tweet, the company posted a gif of a soldier being flamethrowered underneath the caption, when you're too hot from the club, hashtag just World War 1 things. And this came not a week after e 8 Peter Moore was seen on Twitter wearing a Battlefield 1 onesie, proclaiming that it had pocket space for your melee weapons and your Doritos. Honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if those Doritos were especially made mustard gas flavor, just to rub salt into everything. This year also saw virtual reality becoming a, hmm, there's a word for this, actuality, with the release of the Oculus Rift and HTC Vive. And contrary to everyone's belief that everyone would be de dedicating a room to their brand new VR masturbatoriums, it turned out that VR is still a plaything of the eager few. And it also turned out that where Oculus was expected to dominate, it turned out that the HTC Vive, with its room scale functionality, ended up being the headset of choice amongst VR connoisseurs. The biggest loser out of this entire year was, and I mean this in every sense of the word by the way, was Palmer Lucky, the founder of Oculus, when in September it was found out that he had donated to Nimble America, a political group dedicated to posting anti-Hillary Clinton memes associated with the subreddit r slash the Donald. They held the belief that, quote, shit posting is powerful and meme magic is real. When asked by whether it was him behind it, Pamalaki did confirm that he had made the, don the donations, telling the Daily Beast, It is something that no campaign is going to run. I thought it sounded like a real jolly good time. Well, congratulations, Palmer. Turns out that the next four years are going to be a jolly good time. If only there was some virtual headset world that we could escape all this from. Hmm. Well, there was one piece of gaming news that was almost as big as the US election. I speak, of course, of Pokemon Go, otherwise known as the reason you should have invested in shares for portable battery chargers at the start of the year. The game ended up being unlike anything that we've seen in this world of gaming, where thousands of people of all demographics were huddled around Pokestops and areas with rare Pokemon. Everyone wanted a piece of the Pokemon Go action, from businesses to presidential candidates. One website was even founded that promised to set up Pokemon Go plays together on dates. Although, here's a piece of advice if you're starting an online dating website. If your users are going to have sex at some point, maybe don't advertise with a tagline, catch them all together. That could end terribly. So how do you date go? Alright, but I might have to visit the doctor. I, uh, she gave me the Krabbies. The hype has since died down, but Pokemon Go leaves us the legacy of long walks, this douchebag of a team leader, and fake news stories that everyone clicked on. Again, 2016. Do you remember that news story about the highway pileup that was caused when that driver stopped in the middle of the road to catch that Pikachu? That was a fake. What about that story of that teen who stabbed his brother after he deleted all of his Pokemon? Yes, that was also a fake. What about that news story when Ash finally became a Pokemon master? 
That is obviously a fake because this guy insists on using an underpowered, overspoiled Pikachu get good, you scrub. So with that, we leave 2016. Sure, some of the news may have been dire, but it just meant that the games had a chance to shine even brighter. The games are so, so good this year, and 2017 just promises to be even better. Alongside the promise of the Microsoft Scorpio and the Nintendo Switch, it just means that the future may be almost tolerable. Almost. And that is everything that has happened in the world, ever.